We have initiated the journey for data and sustainability with research cases and examples. But how is it like to really work in the field? How do big companies like Coca-Cola, Seat transition into a more sustainable model for their business, for their consumers, and also for the regulations? What are the current trends and difficulties to move forward to a more circularity future? Welcome to another episode of Data for Future. I'm your host, Tammy. Today, we have the pleasure to take on this data-driven sustainability tour with someone who has dedicated 11 years consulting in the field of circularity. Let's welcome Jordi Oliver, the CEO of environmental consultancy Inedit. Inedit started as a spin-off of a PhD project. With all the research in hand, Jordi worked with his team to create a eco-innovation projects that improve business competitiveness through sustainability design and strategy with strong expertise in life cycle assessment, carbon foreign ana- analysis, eco-designing, sustainability supply chain, and sustainability strategy development for companies. Without further ado, let's dive into the interview, and I hope you enjoy it. So Jordi, officially welcome to Data for Future. To start off, other, after viewing your impressive bio, I think me together with our audience are curious about what is exactly eco-innovation projects. As nowadays, we all focus a lot on sustainability. We hear about how it is important for companies. Uh, maybe you can give us some concrete examples of, of what you have been doing with your company and give some example for the projects. Well, hello, and thank you for inviting me. When we work on an eco-innovation projects, we, what we do is to use uh, sustainability as a lever for innovation projects. So as you know, sustainability has been a an issue of growing importance for the society and for companies. So this has to be uh, part of the innovation and the change in, in the companies and the value propositions, in the design of products, etc. So what we do uh, at Inedit is to uh, come along with uh, companies and support them in their transition towards uh, more sustainable uh, models, towards a circular economy, by giving them support or data in terms of sustainability. So we we provide um, quantitative data using life cycle assessment, carbon footprinting, uh, water footprinting of products and organizations. So we we provide them a diagnosis of which are the uh, environmental problems that are more pressing for them. And then from, from this diagnose, we work on the eco-design of products, packaging, uh, services. So we include sustainability, the environment in the design process. And finally, we also support them by, uh, on creating new uh, types of relationships a new kind of alliances and collaborations with uh, suppliers which are essential part of the of the process towards sustainability for for companies. Mm-hmm. So I see it's a very holistic perspective. We first for the companies you're collaborating with, help them to identify what um, wh- where they are current at in terms of sustainability, and then you kind of come up with a proposal about how they can design the process better then you connect them with the suppliers or certain tools and resources to help them to achieve it. Exactly. Yes, it's very, very holistic. So we work with uh, different companies from different sectors, but um, we are also getting specialized with the agri-food sector, for instance, is uh, one that we, we work a lot with, uh, with agri-food uh, companies from mm-hmm. the, the value chain. 
because it's a sector that um, has more pressure uh, on environmental issues uh, such as uh, biodiversity conservation, uh, climate change, uh, wood scarcity, uh, management of uh, pesticides, uh, fertilizers, etc., because it's directly affected by this, but also because there's a growing regulation, regulatory pressure, pressure on them, uh, but also uh, consumer demands. No, that there's segments of consumers, consumers that ask for sustainable uh, food uh, or products with sustainability uh, attributes, and are willing to pay even uh, willing to pay uh, more for for this. So there's a market opportunity too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Would you mind giving us a more detailed example when you say agri-food? Do you collaborate <laughs> with the farms, farmers? What scale are they? Yes, sure. Um, for instance, we are working uh, for now for eight years uh, with uh, Coca-Cola uh, in a project of uh, sustainable uh, citrus uh, production in Spain, um, where the company is uh, worried or wants to uh, reach uh, zero water consumption. Um, so they are uh, su- supporting farmers to improve their uh, water watering uh, systems in in citrus production and also applying uh, good practices for for farming so what we do is to develop these good practices implement them in pilots um, certify those uh, farmers that uh, are sustainable suppliers and then uh, create programs for um, getting a long-term relationship with them. This is just an example of how a very, very big company, very large company um, is working from the field because they want to have a sustainable supply chain. So to put this in value and also to to manage um, reputational risks. No? Um, because if, if you are working properly with all your value chain, you are uh, reducing uh, any scandals or risks on your uh, brand reputation, which also has a big value. Other, other examples are in a smaller scale, for instance, with uh, local uh, retailers, which also are an important part of the of the value chain on the carbon footprint of their products mm-hmm. so how can they market uh, the products communicating the their carbon footprint and uh, giving this as a, an added value for the final consumer that um, can take decisions uh, in a way that is more more informed and also packaging packaging in this sector uh, agri food sector is a very large uh, consumer of single-use uh, packaging. And so we are working a lot with different companies on improving the design of packagings. And this means that making them more functional, this means uh, reducing the environmental impact and the economic costs. Because when you make a better design, you reduce also the, the consumption of materials, improve the energy efficiency, the logistics, etc. Okay, cool. I, this is very interesting because how I actually get to know you, Jordi, is through the L'Oreal brainstorm competition where the L'Oreal want to reduce the plastic impact of their product. One of them could be reduce the plastic in their packaging. And I assume your company came in as the mentor and consultancy for this specific project. And as I'm going through the program, we uh, we were learning about different alternatives for traditional plastic packaging. However, one aspect we figure out is sometimes when you switch from plastic, single-use plastic, to let's say paper or other alternatives, you might reduce the plastic consumption. But in the other side, you are increasing, let's say, the water or carbon footprint. Is that a common case? Like when we are talking about sustainability, it's always a trade-off. Very often, very often, unfortunately. That's why we do work with uh, tools such as life cycle assessment that have a life cycle perspective. So from the cradle to the gate uh, or from the cradle 
to a grave of products and we analyze different impact factors or different uh, environmental impacts because uh, it's common to have uh, trade-offs you know? and with plastics it happens that plastic is a great material for many applications and it's not for other applications so as a society we tend to to identify uh, or to simplify the messages no plastic now plastic is bad uh, and it's not for, for for many applications is the best material you can you can have so by substituting plastics, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. now for bioplastics, for instance, what you do is uh, shifting from one material to another that might have a larger water footprint. For instance, bio bioplastics that uh, come from uh, agriculture, from corn, from sugarcane, etc., uh, need a lot of water uh, in their production um, phase, and uh, so. In this indicator, it might be worse than uh, a regular plastic from fossil fuels or even in carbon footprint. So, yes, this is difficult. Now, now we are we are finishing a project, for instance, with a, a product uh, with a company that that produces uh, chocolate um, and, and also chocolate spread. And we were comparing uh, plastic uh, jars uh, with uh, glass jars. Mm -hmm. And it happens if you use single-use glass jars, uh, more energy-consuming than using single-use plastic jars. But this is complex to, to explain to the to the consumers, no? because you, you perceive glass as uh, environmentally uh, better. But it will be better if you can reuse it, not if you just... Uh, melt uh, glass for producing a new jar and uh, using it once. No? Um, so it's com sustainability is very very complex, and uh, normally marketing departments uh, tend to be to to simplify the messages. So this is a bad combination. Mm -hmm. That's what we always call the greenwashing. No, people change some aspects, but then they hide all the other like side effects of their change. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, there's a risk of, of uh, greenwashing um, yeah. because uh, if you just explain part of the story uh, and you hide the other on purpose or by accident, and then uh, you're not providing the, 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 the proper or the most accurate information. So we need education as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so consumers have to... Uh, learn to uh, understand uh, sustainability uh, because if not, uh, there, there's also a gap between brands and consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to continue, like to go further to dive into that, not only in terms of the like, environmental impact when we spin off from, let's say, single-use plastic solutions, sometimes when we go to the market for consumers, it's, it also means it's more expensive or time consuming to go for some zero waste alternative or more organic sustainable alternatives. So that brought up a question to me that does sustainability always connotates a trade off of convenience or it means higher cost? What's your perspective on that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. Since now it has, it has many, many times, yes, um, because um, um, sustainability or environmental impacts are an externality of uh, the economy. So nobody wakes up in the morning uh, to go to work and pollute. Mm -hmm. uh, no? People go to uh, produce concrete, uh, to pr produce steel, to open a shop. Nobody wakes up to, to pollute. But we do. We all do. Uh, and, and some activities do more than others. Uh, and if we don't account for these impacts in our uh, economic costs of, of the activity, then uh, we are polluting. And those companies that want to internalize the, this cost, the environmental cost, turn to be more expensive because you are paying for some costs that your competitors uh, mm -hmm. are not paying. So it's unfair. It's very unfair because those who realize and want to do something about uh, sustainability uh, normally have to assume higher mm -hmm. costs. Um, so also consumers that want to be, that are concerned about these issues uh, have to pay higher costs. And sometimes, uh, I mean, this is a big barrier for uh 
a mass transformation of, of the system of production and consumption. So what we need is to internalize this cost. So we need policies that put the, the real costs of operation. So uh, carbon tax, for instance, would be very welcome uh, because it would be a, a way uh, to put everyone uh, mm -hmm. under the same rules and to incentivize uh, decarbonization because those that haven't worked till now Uh, we'll have to hurry no, to innovate, to change the way they produce, they distribute, how their goods are consumed, because if not, they will be out of the market. They will be too expensive. But until now, it's an unfair competition. Yeah, totally. And I think right now what we're relying on a lot is the really the awareness from the consumer, where the consumers are putting pressure on the companies to do better. Uh, but I mm -hmm. think that also touch back to one of the points you mentioned earlier about the regulation pressure on the companies. Do we see anything coming up that's really promising that we hopefully we'll see an effective impact in terms of policies? We hope so. Um, in the European Union, uh, there are several initiatives going on. The last weeks, there has been quite, quite a lot of, uh, of activity. Uh, for instance, uh, there has been the new uh, farm to fork uh, strategy mm -hmm. uh, has been approved. Uh, so all the agri-food sector is, is affected by... Um, By this, by this strategy that will be developed in different uh, regulations uh, in terms of uh, carbon footprinting, packaging, um, uh, food waste, etc. Mm -hmm. One third of the food that is being produced in the world has no, is never being consumed. So there's a large amount of food waste and resources that are uh, underused or... Um, or And then and also the, is this the strategy, the strategy of biodiversity, um, the action plan for the circular economy, and also, of course, the, the Green Deal, the European Green Deal. So there are a lot of, of initiatives going on in the European Union, uh, but we'll see if, if, how, how they, um, finally, finally land to the different uh, states and how do they affect, uh, the companies. Mm -hmm. But there's, There's a cr uh, growing consensus, and this is good, from all political uh, colors that uh, there's a need for a carbon tax and carbon uh, border tax in the European Union. Okay. So mm. this is this 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 is a positive uh, signal uh, in this in this sense. Of course, uh, Europe uh, is small uh, in, in in a global perspective is a is a, a small and old uh, uh, region in the, in the world but i hope that it still have some uh, influence in terms of, of consumption yeah for sure um such as the gdpr as well i think there has to be someone standing out and set a standard to begin with and hopefully that happens very soon so Let's shift our gear a little bit to from sustainability to more data focused side. Um, as we know, we mentioned a lot about certification, carbon footprint assessments. All of this is, I assume the process involve a lot of data collection for to, to make the assessment feasible, no? And also with the, in, in edit, the platform I find a really fancy new tool is your circularity assessment. Can you introduce us a bit how data is playing a role in terms of the whole um, if not, uh, sustainability world and yeah, give us more details in there? <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, data is uh, essential for for measuring and for taking uh, clever decisions or smart decisions. decisions. Um, so also in, in sustainability, and when we do the carbon footprint of products and organizations, we need uh, the companies to provide data on their consumptions, on the materials they are using, they are using on the uh, logistics, on the transportation, which kind of uh, vehicles, etc., etc. So, uh, in some times, this information is not even available. So, mm -hmm. they have to gather this data, to have to generate this data. We are at uh, a very, 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 very uh, starting point and even uh, very large companies with uh, thousands of uh, shops mm -hmm. that... that 
are sending us uh, PDF files with the energy bills for every month of 2,000 shops. Uh, they have not even... Um, register this this information no mm-hmm. so <laughs> this is this is happening now it's worrying it's worrying because we are we don't have the data uh, uh, available mm-hmm. but we at the same time we are seeing and we are also working on on platforms to make this uh, easier and to connect companies with suppliers and with clients uh, in in platforms that share uh, transparent and uh, trustful uh, uh, information, so uh, that we we are seeing two two speeds. No, uh, the, the reality of of the uh, company that is very slow, uh, but at the same time, platforms that uh, will f- make things uh, easier in the in the short term. Um, but also. Um, for, for a wider perspective, for a circular economy transition uh, where companies might have to shift their business models from the uh, product-based models uh, to, to sell cars, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, to, uh, to service-based economies where you, you don't sell the good, you don't sell the car, for instance, or, but you lease it or you have a car-sharing company, uh, we see that data is also... Uh, crucial because uh, you need to know uh, where you your good is well how is it operating uh, uh, you need to do a, a, a maintenance so um, so you need a lot of information so IOT uh, is also a lever for the circular transition without IOT without data companies won't be able to shift their business models uh, towards uh, circles to a circularity mm-hmm. interesting uh, when you say cars i read a case study from your website is it i think you had collaboration with siat yes 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 uh we have been working with uh, siat uh, for many years uh SEAT, uh, it's a uh, part of the volkswagen group mm-hmm. uh, and Seat, all the Volkswagen Group, and I think all the automotive industry uh, is thinking on a massive change on their business models. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you want to buy a car, they will sell it. If you are <laughs> with you, your money, they, you will have a car. Uh, no problem. This this model is still uh, there. But if you look at the ads, uh, they are not saying the price of a car anymore. They're saying the monthly fee you have to pay for having a, a car. No? And uh, with the electric uh, car, this is more and more important because there's a scarce amount of uh, very key resources of uh, rare earth uh, materials or elements that are needed for the batteries. Uh, so if they want to be competitive in the future, they cannot continue manufacturing and selling uh, cars, but they have to keep their strategic uh, resources that are the, the batteries and the materials that are in the in the cars. Mm-hmm. So they won't develop the electric car uh, as they did with uh, the combustion uh, engines mm-hmm. because they, they can... They can't not do it. Uh, they have to keep the, the materials. So the, the leasing uh, will be on the car sharing and other uh, sharing uh, options that can be developed. Um, autonomous fleets, etc., cetera, um, will fall under these new business models uh, where the company will keep these strategic uh the strategic resources. So we work with SEAT and different projects. Uh, so more, some that were more strategic, how to um, link the different departments of the company with the vision, with this vision that I'm uh, talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody agrees, but how we do it, <laughs> uh, which project do we have to start uh, to achieve this vision in, uh, in five or 10 years uh, from now. Mm-hmm. And then we were working on a second life uh, project. So how can we recover uh, cars uh, and recover components and reuse them uh, in the process? So how can we take a car 
uh, that is uh, at, at its end of life. And instead of recycling the materials, that is what is being done, how can we recover the components, the, gear, the gears, uh, the wheels or whatever, um, and reuse them uh, in the production process mm -hmm. so that new cars that come out of the factory uh, have components that are being reused yeah. with the same warranty that as if they were new. Mm -hmm. And this is very, very powerful no? uh, because uh, then you can design more durable components. You, you just don't design for a 10, 10 days or 10, sorry, 10 years uh, lifespan, but maybe for 20 or 30 because it's your component. You know who is using it and you will recover it. So you can... Um, break with the obsolescence with this business model breaks the need for uh for an obsolescence of goods mm -hmm. uh, be because uh, you just need this to be operating in the economy uh, your goods are in the economy you get paid monthly mm -hmm. uh, for its use and the, the more durable the better the more repairable the better Sure. The more upgradable, the better. Mm -hmm. And this is great. This is the, these business models align the interest of the company, of the business, mm -hmm. the uh, interest of the society and the environment. But you need a lot of data here. Very interesting. Yeah, I think the highlight here, the interesting perspective is about how to transition from a pro product company to a service-based company, right? And it's very interesting to figure out how a lot of companies do this transition, not only because the policy or the consumer urge, but because simply they won't have enough material to continue their current business model. And from the other side, I definitely see how recycle is a very, the last step solution for us to be sustainable. In between, there are so many steps, like refuse, reuse, many re, re, re steps. And now a trending concept we see is how the non-version material that is reused from other parts of the process, but is proven to be more, even more durable. And this whole cycle, circular economy, even push further how companies start to offer more service rather than products to their consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and it uh, creates more uh, local jobs. Some of them with uh, for very highly skilled people, another that will be more for, uh, for um, technical uh, qualifications. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So if we come back to the data collection side, because we know for every project to be able to run assessment, propose new com solutions, or even as you mentioned, incorporates planning down five years, which projects we prioritize. Everything involves data to make the decisions. However, as good as data it is, it's the most difficult part is how we collect them and uh, have a reliable source of data. Let's say you, you actually your company work with really big profiles. When a potential customer come to you and say, okay, we want to be more sustainable and here is our product, how do you go about to help them to set up the measurement process? Do you do yourself or do you use some third-party tools? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the problems is that is that every project uh, is is different. Uh, the needs are different. The companies are different. The sectors are different. So it's uh, till now is very tailor made tailor made solutions. We do we do have developed uh, software. Uh, for gathering information and, and giving access to the to our clients to to register uh, the data we need for for the project but still is uh, very tailor-made so it's very time consuming uh, and the the next step is that companies request data to their suppliers in the moment of purchase so that you don't purchase if you don't get the associated data the environmental data as you as as it is being done with uh, financial data legal data etc so that uh, companies do have some requests in order to to allow you to be their supplier this 
should be the same also for environmental data. So that, uh, for instance, in cosmetics, no, that we were talking with uh, L'Oreal and also with with other companies in the in this sector, uh, if uh, there's no, it makes little sense for a uh, um, perfume brand to assess the carbon footprint of its packaging. It has to be the supplier of the packaging that when supplies, when uh, manufacturers this, pa- this packaging and sells this, this packaging, also communicates the, its carbon footprint because it, it's, it's an important value and data in, uh, also in the, in the purchase uh, process. No? Um, so there, there are some some data, uh, some data that cannot be um, measured by the company itself, but it's part of of, uh, of its supplier. New tools. What they do is to request uh, data um, to the to the value chain. So going backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and integrating all of them uh, in the same platform. This is kind of of, of uh, blockchain, but in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, sometimes there's no need for uh, for blockchain, but uh, the the concept is the same. No, that you can uh, uh, trace uh, the data yeah. from the different tiers of suppliers in a in a value chain. Sure, I would say it sounds pretty simple. You know, like you ask your suppliers, your supplier asks its suppliers, and then we get data for everyone. Then we have a whole flow of data. However, the question I have is there are just so many ways to measure it. <laughs> and I assume there are different standards in different industries, but also there are various standards. Like which one do we hold as the, do we have a single source of truth about the environmental impact? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no, we don't. No. <laughs> uh, no. And uh, yes. And of course this is a problem. Um, and, 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 requesting data to your suppliers is not easy because you, you might have hundreds or thousands of suppliers. So this is a very, very complex uh, situation. And, and there are different types of suppliers. There are suppliers where you have power of influence because they are smaller or because you have a uh, big uh, uh, expenditure on them. Uh, but there are suppliers that are larger than, than you <laughs> and sometimes... Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot larger so you cannot request uh, basically anything to them um <laughs> you have to be okay. thankful for for being their client um uh-huh. so there are many different types of relationships and there are different standards no uh and now we're seeing uh, a trend towards uh, sustainability reporting. So there are more and more companies that are reporting their sustainability activities, which is good. And um, here there are some standards such as uh, the GRI, um, the Global Reporting Initiative, um, that I would see it's it's the standard, the common standard. Um, mm-hmm. But once you deep into the details, uh, if you want to report the you know, biodiversity, there will be different standards for biodiversity. If you want to assess uh, sustainable ingredients, there are different standards. If you want to assess uh, carbon footprint, there might be different. Even though there's a, yeah. an ISO standard, which is the international. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there might be different methods or even inside the same method, uh, you can have different um, scopes. So, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, some some companies uh, do measure only their process, others take into account the suppliers, others take into account the logistics, or others take into account all the life cycle. Uh, so it's difficult to compare. And here we come again to the to the greenwashing, no? That yes. if you can choose uh-huh. whatever you can, what, what you want to assess and how do you explain it, then you cannot compare and 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 it's misleading. It's uh-huh. misleading. You have to be an expert to understand and to put this into perspective which is you know, something we can we cannot expect expect for the for the population uh, for the for all the consumers yeah. and uh, here we have a problem so we, we need uh, some kind of leadership uh, I, I think both from from private or, or public sectors uh, I, I don't I don't know where do we have to find the leadership but someone needs to put some um, some instructions, clear instructions of what do we have to compare. So normally we, we come up with a sectoral uh, 
agreements or standards, but uh, the, the European Union is working for a long, long time for the product environmental footprint, mm -hmm. which should be kind of, if you, you know, the, the energy label uh, of uh, electric, electric and electronic uh, equipments mm -hmm. where you have A, B, C, D. So this common label uh, that is compulsory that all the products have to have uh, so that it allows for comparison. So the, the European Union is working for something similar for uh, all the products that are okay. put in the market. That sounds like that a is, massive process. Yeah. <laughs> to yes, be done, it's yeah. massive. It's it's very uh, time consuming. There are very, there are uh, methodological uh, concerns, mm -hmm. uh, but I think this this will come. But when is a mystery. Yeah, but uh, the problem is that we do need them urgently as soon as possible. Um, I think yeah. here we can conclude like another side of data, like as glamorous and uh, magical as it sounds. It's always a very lengthy and a messy process. There is a lot of truth, but more often lies lying in the numbers we see and how to get the numbers straight and make sure they don't lie to us. They don't do greenwashing to us is another mm -hmm. big question we should solve. <laughs> As, as, as you said, um, we we are an urgent, in an urgent need for for change because uh, we are seeing the effects of, of climate change, of the loss of, loss of biodiversity, and uh, this is very close. This is very close. So the the change has to be done now. Uh, so while uh, you are preparing the data or the systems, for, uh, don't be uh, don't be stopped. Uh, so start walking, start walking, mm -hmm. uh, defining strategies, defining where do you want to be, and then the data will be the, the facilitator for, for this. But we need to speed up, uh, mm -hmm. basically. Cool. And then companies like United is here to help businesses to achieve that. Um, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just to follow up on that question, do, is your customer, do you focus more on the big profile corporate portfolios or you also work with smaller scale startup companies? We're we working a lot of, uh, with uh, large large uh, companies mm -hmm. because um, they have realized that uh, they have to, to work on, on sustainability uh, because there is something that you cannot just ignore anymore, which is good. Uh, they also have the, the budgets, uh, the time and the professionals uh, for uh, this kind of, of initiative and projects. Mm -hmm. But uh, we see that many times what large companies do is to, um, in order to innovate, uh, they need to collaborate uh, with uh, SMEs, with uh, their suppliers. They they cannot develop new solutions if they do not collaborate uh, with other uh, innovative, perhaps SMEs. Uh, so we see that this, this transformation and this transition is not something that is on the roof of the large companies or the small companies. It's uh, an ecosystem approach so that uh, all the actors from policymakers, large companies, SMEs, financial sector, mm -hmm. uh, universities, consultants, citizens uh, have to uh, collaborate in this process because uh, if not, any of these actors might be a barrier an important barrier for the others to to advance. So we are working with a lot with uh, large companies, as I said, but then we also collaborate with SMEs, uh, with different types of projects, uh, with different sources of, uh, of, uh, of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, we have to ask for public money, for uh, grants, for etc., for for paying for these projects. But uh, we see that this is an ecosystemic uh, change. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, we will get stuck somewhere. Very interesting. I totally agree. Because yeah, when we talk about one specific change, it's always one hair, but it's attached to the whole body. And the your company's expertise within the whole ecosystem can really facilitate the conversations and the like the information and conversation flow 
among the system. We try, we, yeah, we try to. Yes, so our role is this: is to to facilitate this transition, and then the the tools may change, uh, but the the role is this: we need this type of organization, not only ourselves, of course, but there's a there's room for many other companies. Um, to facilitate this transition, mm -hmm. to create dialogues with uh, actors that uh, were being uh, were very uh, far from each other, but now need to to talk the same language. You know, and sometimes when you haven't had a relationship for many times with uh, other uh, sectors, or you just see the public administration as your enemy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and now you see you need to collaborate with them because uh, if you want to reuse your waste, you need uh, to be allowed to do so. No, so and the administration has to understand that you are doing this uh, with goodwill and uh, this is a positive contribution. No, that is not uh, just a way of uh, escaping from regulation. So there's uh, an urgent need for a common understanding as well. Absolutely. So. To conclude that, Jordi, would you want to share with us and our audience what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, yes, uh, you can go to our uh, website. It is uh, inedit.barcelona. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, inedit.barcelona. Here you have all the all the contact details uh, for anything you may you may need. Super. That concludes for our episode today on sustainability on data. Thank you, Jody, for joining us. Appreciate your insights. Thank you for the invitation. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into data and sustainability with Jordi as much as I do. Definitely a big world to explore and a whole ecosystem to be aware of as we talk about any change as individual and as a company. To move along, I hope you enjoyed our show and leave any of your comments, thoughts, feedback with us. Anything would be more than helpful for us to keep growing the community and for us to keep improving our episodes and podcast. Meanwhile, if you want to support us, we also have links for patrons and donation. Any support will be appreciated as well to keep us moving forward and produce more quality content for you. That's it for today. Data for Future. We'll see you next time.